I don't like to lie to my mother. So when I was leaving the house and she asked where I was going, I told her the truth to the psychologist. She looked at me, laughed, and said, no, seriously, I am serious, I told her. My mother stared at me, trying to figure out whether or not I was pulling one of my classic jokes on her. After she couldn't figure it out, she gave up and said, mental, don't tell me that. I arrived to the psychologist's office, n nervous to knock on the door. I knew once I did, there was no going back, so I just stood there, contemplating whether or not I really needed therapy, or if I was brave enough to go through it. I knocked and almost immediately she opened the door. The psychologist didn't look how I expected. She was about five years older than me, thin, short, pale, wore a pencil skirt and a blouse showing cleavage. <laughs> She greeted me and told me to follow her into her office. She told me to sit on a big gray couch while she sat down in a small purple one. The room was peaceful, it didn't have too much noise to it. Just a glass desk, a few books on the wall, a framed picture, and the two aforementioned couches. Natural lighting came into the office through a single large open window, and the walls, the walls were painted a serene purple. Everything was meticulously chosen to not trigger any unhappy thoughts. I didn't like it. It made me feel sick in the head. In Mexican culture, especially men, therapy is not encouraged or talked about. A man is supposed to be strong enough to be able to control his own goddamn mind. I tried to do just that for many years, but it never got better. It just got worse. The very first question the psychologist asked me was, why was I there? I told her I had suicidal depression. How much do you think about suicide, she said. Every day for three months. Have you had depression before? Yes. Depression wasn't new for me. I remember way back when I was five, I would go to my parents' bedroom and wait for them to notice me. Once they did, they would ask me what was wrong, and I would say, I'm sad. I blame part of my depression on my upbringing. My mother would spend all day cleaning the house, not wanting to leave a single speck of dust because my dad would always run his finger on our black kitchen table. If he felt or saw any dust, he would get mad and say, Wewona, you didn't do anything today. My parents would then start fighting and my father would snap his finger, order, to go, order me to go to my room and close the door. They did this almost every night. As Jim Morrison said, I believe this put an impression on my fragile, eggshell mind. I explained all this to the psychologist, and she asked me if I knew what my first suicidal thought was. I told her it started when I was 15 and a cousin of mine died. What I didn't tell her was that I grabbed a pair of scissors that day, put it to my wrist while I was repeatedly thinking, it should have been me, it should have been me. I was a shitty student, a bad friend, a bad son, and I wasn't good at basically anything. Meanwhile, my late cousin was good at everything. He was part of the Bar City Soccer Club and he was college bound. He was the pride of the family. After talking a bit more about my upbringing and my late cousin, the psychologist wanted to know what my day to day looked like. I explained to her that my day was very normal. I went to school, to work, to my girlfriend's house, and then I would go home. And your friends, she asked. I don't see them very much, I said. I was lying. I didn't have any friends, but I didn't want to admit it. I hated the stereotype of the sad loner. But you have friends, right? Yes. No. No, I don't. I don't have any friends. Did you ever have friends? Yes. When? A few years ago. And what happened? I got a girlfriend. They didn't like her, so I stopped talking to them. Do you love your girlfriend? Yes, I said. She didn't seem very convinced, and neither was I. All my friends had moved away for college or for work, and the ones that stayed would invite me to go out, but not her. I always said no, and the few times I said yes, there was always a huge fight with my girlfriend. We had been talking about, we had been talking for about 30 minutes, and in those 30 minutes we had established my upbringing, the reason why I was suicidal, and the fact that I didn't have any friends. She told me that she only wanted to know one more thing, and it was my current relationship with my mother and my father. I told her I didn't see my father much. 
but that I had a very good relationship with my mother. I lied again. My relationship with my mother was okay at best. I went to school in the United States and I lived in Tijuana. Because of this, I was out of the house at 9 a.m. and I wouldn't come back until midnight. This meant I barely saw her, even though we lived in the same house. Okay, so you don't see your mom during the week. But what about the weekend? Do you do anything fun, she said. We watch movies, I responded. And she smiled as, as if she finally saw something positive in my life. When was the last time you saw a movie together? Six months ago. She shook her head in desperation. She told me the session was almost over and that she had everything she needed to give me an accurate opinion. She glimpsed at her notes, leaned forward a bit, looked at me straight in the eyes and said, do you realize how sad and lonely your life is? <laughs> I opened my eyes wide. My life isn't sad or lonely. I have a girlfriend and my mom. I told her with an offended tone. As soon as I mentioned my mom and girlfriend, the psychologist smiled like I was playing checkers and she was playing chess. You mean the girlfriend you don't love and the mother you never talked to? I was so angry I wanted to tell her how wrong she was, but I couldn't think of anything to say. She was right. I had no friends, I was suicidal, depressed, friendless, in a relationship I had no business being. In my desperation, my eyes started to water. I was too proud to cry in front of her, of anyone really. I covered my eyes and said, my life is not lonely. Maybe this time she will agree with me. Yes it is, and the sooner you realize it, the sooner you can fix it. The session was over shortly after that. Before I left, she told me to think about whether or not I wanted to keep moving forward. She told me that like today, it was going to be painful, but that she was going to give me the tools to combat my depression. I didn't know if I wanted to go back. Therapy hurts way more than I ever thought. I wanted to change, but I was also too proud and too stubborn to do so. I compared myself to Ouroboros, the mythological snake that was constantly eating itself stuck in an endless loop of pain and reincarnation. I wanted the pain to stop. I wanted the loop to stop. I went back home, my eyes were red, and as soon as my mother saw me, she asked what was wrong. I told her the truth again. I went to a psychologist because I had suicidal depression. My mother took a step back and said, be serious, I am. I hugged her and told her I am sorry for not being a good son. She hugged me back confused and simply said, I love you. Let's talk about it later. I stayed for a whole year in therapy until my psychologist and I felt like I did not need it anymore. I reconnected with my friends and I made some new ones. Me and my girlfriend broke up and my mother and I have a better relationship now. It is still not perfect, but it is certainly better. There are still days where depression knocks me down, but I stand up and fight it. My mind is finally a safe place for me. And all I can think of every day is the fact that I am safe. Safe from myself, safe from others. Just safe. I am finally safe. Thank you.